Today is F-I-L-D-I day. I want to give up, I really do. I'm outside my comfort zone and feel like I've bitten off too much. I'm still learning stuff, but uh, lacking a bit of confidence at the moment that any of it's worthwhile. Um, and I've justified to myself how I can stop making videos and call it irony, not quitting. But today is F-I-L-D-I day. Fuck it, let's do it. Um, now poker. What I want to try and do is just explore a couple of concepts that if you're not familiar with, um, kind of might provoke you to think about the game a little bit differently. Look, I'm not gonna get very far towards that goal. This is not my expertise. Um, I'm not a good poker player. But even in my short poker career, I've graduated from a um, extremely very shit player to a just a bit shit. And with effort and intellect, you can take that journey too. Our focus here is going to be on the mathematical and empirical. At least from my personal perspective, I think it's going to be most useful if I can leave you with some kind of general frameworks or rules, or really something that you can just um, follow, uh, then come to understand, and then in time, um, break it and get creative. So I'm going to be talking about playstyles in details tag. Look, it really is beginner stuff, but if you're not familiar, um, even just thinking about the game this way can really stop you playing like a complete idiot, and it gives you some framework to help improve. Uh, now first for the caveats, because poker isn't my world and I'm not an expert, so it only feels diligent to tread lightly here. Um, there's a lot more to poker and a lot more that you need to know. On screen, on this side probably as well, keep them. Um, there's a few concepts uh, or terms that you really should learn about next. Look, anyone who knows poker, please comment below if there's important ones that I have missed. Um, or anything that I've misconstrued, I'm sure there's going to be a lot. Uh, in particular, I'm not going to be talking about position, um, and you may also notice that I completely ignore the blinds, and during my example hands, we will be playing with bottle caps. I understand how uncouth this is, but from my perspective, what I hope to get across is a kind of more general, fundamental understanding. Look, honestly, as a beginner poker player, if you sit down at the table and don't understand about blinds, somebody will tell you about blinds. They may not tell you that uh, a totally aggressive game is a great way for beginners to play that uh, helps them hold onto their stacks. They may not tell you that. They may keep that to themselves. Quickly on position though, uh, position is vitally important and really should be coming into every single decision that you make. Um, so please go off and learn some more about that. Okay, so our topic is play styles and the tag play style. If you don't know what that means, well, you are surely in the right place. Look, so it's no surprise that poker, a game, has play styles. So maybe analogous to, uh, let's say, play styles from video games. So let's say you pick up Uncharted and look, you can play stealthily, you can play guns blazing. Importantly, depending on the circumstance uh, and your mood, um, you may kind of switch between the two. So let's talk about tag. See, because sometimes it helps to understand a word if we break it down. Let's do that now, shall we? Tight, aggressive game. The first part, tight, um, relates to your range. What's range? Well, here are 10 hands that I've dealt out. Um, which of those would you play? A loose player may think that all of them look good. Uh, you can't win if you don't play. Um, but when you're playing tight, it should look more like this. Um, playing tight, you may play less than one in five hands. Um, not the most thrilling, but playing tight increases your chance of having better cards than the other players in the hand, um, simply by virtue of only playing the better cards. The second part, aggressive, is in reference to your betting, uh, and importantly, this includes your folding. Uh, aggression can also be thought of on a spectrum, um, ranging from passive to aggressive. Aggressive players generally call less, but raise and fold more. Now, there are a lot of reasons to place a lot of bets, um, but in this video, we're gonna be betting for value. That's a whole concept of its own, but what I mean to say here is that as a tight player, look, we're playing the best cards, and we wanna bet in order to get the most value out of those best cards. Um, and look, if they're not good cards, we're gonna be aggressive in folding those cards. Okay. So we're not going to be able to get any further without playing out some example hands. Um, but before we do, I want to speak quickly about our opponent players um, and some of the assumptions we're going to be making about those players. You see, this is a cat. When cats play poker, they are notoriously honest. Um, we're going to give our example opponents a lot of respect. That is to say, if they raise, we're going to take that as an honest indication that they have good cards. Um, these opponents never bluff. And we're gonna also make the assumption that they are tight players, meaning that their good cards uh, probably look similar to the range that we explored a little bit earlier on. In real life, please be more discerning. The people you're playing are not cats, uh, it's more likely that they're dogs. Okay, so what do we see here? Well, 
This looks nice. We're in the middle of a hand. We can see the three players have called and uh, we've got a couple of cards. Ho oh, ho, okay. We've got a pair of kings. So now we have a decision to make. Um, our choices of course are to fold, uh, to call or raise. Um, but the aggressive move, well, it's an easy one here. If we've got the kings, um, we're gonna raise. Okay, that was fun. Uh, let's run another hand. Okay, same situation, but what have we got? Okay, well, that's not a great hand. Um, we've actually discarded this from our range earlier. Um, incredible coincidence. So the aggressive move, to fold. Okay, so you can call, convince yourself that it's only a small bet, but the aggressive action to take is not Goodbye, bad cards, goodbye. Importantly, aggressive players infrequently call. Having a tight range, look, if your cards are good enough to play, um, then they should be good enough to raise with. Uh, and remember, we want to extract as much value from these good cards as possible. So that means getting money onto the table when the cards are good. But let's remember that aggression does not mean raising. To illustrate, ha, another scenario. Okay, so this time a little bit different. It looks like somebody has raised and it looks like another player has called them. One player has folded out. Um, let's look down at our cards. Okay, this is a lot better than the last hand. It's within our tight range. So it's an easy race, right? Well, let's remember that we're assuming that our other players are honest and have a tight range. So the fact that they raise, we're gonna take that as an indication that they both have good cards. So maybe not so fast. I do wonder what she might have. Um, if we look at the few examples from our tight range from before, see some cards in there that are as good or probably better actually than our ace 10. In that case, I don't feel especially confident to raise uh, and it seems kind of pointless to be honest. I mean, if her cards are better than mine, it doesn't seem like a very smart place to be putting a lot of our bottle caps. We're certainly not gonna get the value that we're looking for here. So at this point, raising for value just doesn't really seem like an option. Uh, and I guess we're trying to decide whether we're gonna call or fold. And the aggressive player faced with this decision would fold. Um, that's the aggressive move. Don't fuck around, be in the hand, or be out of it. How much do you want to wager? I'm gonna play it safe. I'll wager zero dollars. Bet why, you might say. That's an ace 10 suited. Those are pretty nice cards. Well, you're right, and you know, do whatever you want, but the short answer is that playing a tight aggressive game keeps you out of trouble spots. Places where, look, you're opening yourself up to being outplayed, or where you're forced to make difficult judgment calls that, and let's be honest, as beginners, we're more likely to get wrong than we are right. Playing a tight aggressive game like saves you from trouble spots. What does a trouble spot look like? Well, let's call and we'll take this hand a little bit further. Ho oh, ho, that's exciting, look at that. We've made a pair of aces, that's great. Probably what we we're aiming for. Uh, we should be ready to make some money, right? Well, let's stop play for a moment and we'll take a look under the hood. Let's flip these cards. Ah, and look at that. So our honest player, who already told us they had good cards, what a surprise, they have good cards. They've hit that ace as well, uh, but they've had ace king, so they've got the king for the kicker. Um, we're actually behind at this point. What would you do if this player bet? What would you do if you were asked to give up your dreams for freedom? Well, knowing your cards, that's an easy fold. Um, but without that information, if those cards were still a mystery, what would you do? If asked to make the ultimate sacrifice, You'd have to think really hard about it. Uh, at worst, as sometimes happens, you might get a little bit overexcited about having hit that ace uh, and you're about to donate some money. Now this is an extreme example, but hopefully an illustrative one, maybe one that explains why playing ace plus trash is trash. In reality, you're probably much more likely to see something like this being crushed by something like this. The people you're playing with will have a much looser range than our cat. So I'm not suggesting that you fold your ace 10 suited to a preflop raise, um, but simply be aware of range and be aware of why you're betting. Fundamentally, tag is an easy, low stress, solid foundation for you to play with. The play style rests on minimizing the tough spots in those tricky decisions. Um, but when you do get stuck in them, uh, well, it makes sure that there's a finger on the scales. Uh, you've got a good chance of having, um, you know, the best starting cards. And what more can you hope for? Uh, it wouldn't be right for me to leave you without some of the downsides uh, of playing tag. The most obvious ones being that you'll become extremely predictable. If you raise whenever you have good cards and you will fall to aggression, smart people take advantage of that. Uh, and it's not the most exciting way to spend a night, I've got to be honest. So keep all of that in mind. But what I will suggest is, you know, um, practice playing some tag, understand it, uh, and then start mixing in Whatever it is you want to do. If you like to bluff, have some fun and add a bit of bluffing. Um, and look, remember that in poker, things can get heated. Um, you can start to bleed money. 
When that happens, just chill out, take a sip of your drink, play some tag. I encourage you to learn more. Uh, I had planned on talking about some other things, um, talking about estimated value, um, pot odds, calculating probability of hitting your hands, uh, but the scope got a little bit away from me. So don't wait on me for that. Please go and find the information yourself if you care to improve your poker game. But I guess if you do wish to see that part too, uh, like and subscribe. Uh, it's probably the only way of really keeping my attention here. Yeah, okay, done. Diddly dee done.